We are all welcome to this broadcast. How are we and how is our week going? I believe we are all doing well. We are welcome, welcome. Today we are looking at the seven steps to overcoming financial anxiety. Seven steps for overcoming financial anxiety. So this, part, this um, broadcast is not particularly for you, but you know, to be able to help you to know how you can help those who are going through such financial anxiety, depression, stress, and the rest of it. And not just that, for you to also share. So I'll actually um, ask us and plead with us today that we share this broadcast with all the people who need it. You're not sure, you're not, you're not even, you don't know whom you will be helping or who you will be, you know, being the saving power. So they're going to be talking a lot about, you know, how we can overcome financial anxiety. Of course, you know that every Thursday we deal with financial health and then we have physical health on Mondays and then we have fitness on Saturday. And once again, I'm Ngozi Achonwa, your health and wellness coach. I teach you how you can stay away from hospital using natural things you can find around you. You know, I teach you how exercises, how foods, nutrition and diet can actually help you so well to become what you're supposed to be. So it's very, very important for us to live healthy and stay away from the hospitals. All right. So, you know, many people from all over the world and from all walks of life, are having to deal with financial stress and uncertainty at this difficult time all right so whether your problem or their problems originate from a loss of work loss of their jobs or out of loan and debt issues or unexpected expenses that might arise for one reason or the other or a combination of these factors financial worry is one of the most common stressors of people in our modern time today. Financial problems can take a huge toll on our mental and physical health, on our relationship, and actually overall quality of life. So having the feeling of being defeated by money can actually impact your sleep and impact, impact your self-esteem and also impact your energy level. I you know this goes a long way for men, especially. When one has this kind of feeling of defeat, one begins to lose sleep, one begins to lose self-esteem, one's energy level decreases, you know, and you know, it can even leave the person feeling very angry, ashamed, fearful, and it will fuel tension and arguments, you know. Just imagine what happens if somebody is having such kind of, feeling for an elevated time it's going to bring a lot of mood swings it's going to elevate the pain the person is having it's also going to increase the risk of depression and also anxiety for that person you know and you know when it happens to some people like that they will resort to unhealthy coping mechanisms like drinking abuse using abuse um, um all these drugs that will make them feel high some go gambling to try to escape that worry and in some worst circumstances, the people can even think of suicide actions. And now that's when people begin to look at sniper. But no matter how hopeless any situation is, there is always a way. There is always a way out of every situation, you know. So, and that's why it's good for us to tackle money problems early. Because if you can tackle money problems early to find a way through that financial crisis, it will ease off your stress level and then it will help you to regain control of your finances and also regain control of your life. So, you know, if we look at the effect of financial stress on your health, if one is talking about the effect of even just taking health alone, looking at the effect of financial stress, we know, we all know that there are many more important things, you know, in life than money. You know, when you're struggling financially, you know, fear and stress can take over your world, but there are, money is not all. Money is not everything in life, you know, and when, when, when you allow money to take over you, lack of money, you know, seeking for money, trying to come up to, you know, your financial dreams and the rest, it can damage your self-esteem. It can make you to feel, you know, defeated and it can even make you to have one kind of sense of despair. So when financial stress becomes so overwhelming, your mind 
your body, your social life will pay a heavy price for it. That's the truth about it. So it's very, very important, like I said, for you to handle your financial issues on time. If you handle it on time, it will go a long way to help you, particularly, uh, you know, on concerning your health. I can remember um, there was one time we were helping a, a man. It was an elderly man, a very wealthy man. And um, he had some crisis and his money went low. So even that man, he had a big house. His house was gigantic. To maintain that house became a problem. It was a house that they used to have maybe like um, four security guards, four gardeners. They had them um, housekeepers there and there, section A, section B, section C. They had the one, you know, very big, beautiful house. And his finances went low. So even to maintain that house was a problem for him. I could remember one of the times we went to pray with him, my husband and myself. And you know, when we were praying, we received a revelation that he's going to come up again. So my, I can remember my husband telling him, he said, you know what? You will come up again. Just try to manage yourself. Reduce some of your staff. It means closing some of the sections of the houses. Just clean them once in a while, you know, because you're going to get rich again. And if you allow this financial dip, you know, getting so low financially to affect you, affect your health, affect your body, affect your mind, affect your social, you know, relationship with people, then you get very sick that when that money comes back, you will just be spending the money to take care of yourself instead of enjoying it. And it's very, very critical and important that we take that advice even that was given to that man because actually you know as revelation brought it there he became very wealthy again but thank god he listened to my husband he had the health to enjoy his life very well so below we're going to be looking at some health issues that arise when you do not handle financial anxiety financial depression financial stress early enough and well enough if you don't handle it early enough and well enough, then some of these things can come up. For example, insomnia, lack of sleep or sleep apnea can begin to happen to you. That's like sleep difficulties. Nothing will keep you, you know, tossing and turning at night more than worrying about unpaid bills or a loss of income. These are some of the things that will make you to keep turning, turning and turning. So if you think about money a lot, you're going to have sleep issues. So insomnia, lack of sleep, sleep difficulties is one of the things that can come around when we allow financial, you know, stress and financial problem and anxiety to take toll of our life. And then the second thing that comes is weight gain or weight loss. You know, stress can disrupt your appetite. It can either make you to not to eat like i said some men when they are having serious financial issues they will just they will be missing me when you give them meals they say they are not taking because they are deep into talk and some it makes them to eat more because you know sometimes stress will make you to be eating and eating and eating so that you can eat away your worries so it can either cause weight gain or weight loss you know because it costs you to anxiously overeat or to skip your meals to save money some people say it's to save money that make them not to eat well. Then another thing that the uh, effect of financial stress can have on your health is depression. Living under the cloud of money problems can leave you feeling very down and hopeless and then struggling to concentrate to make decisions. And people who are struggling with debt or more, you know, they are more likely to have depression than those who are financially stable with what they are doing. Then another cause that comes from money, effect of money, is anxiety. Anxiety. Money can be, you know, like a safety net. When you have money, you feel very good. You don't feel vulnerable. You don't feel anxious. So when you now like that, lack money, you begin to feel anxious. You begin to feel, you know, vulnerable. And all the worrying about, you know, your bills you have to pay, school fees of children, house rent, you know, all that can actually trigger anxiety symptoms, you know, such as, you know, palpitation. Anxiety symptoms can come with pounding heartbeat or palpitation, sweating, 
shaking and even panic attack for some people, especially for middle-aged women. You know, a lot of us that are already in our menopausal stage, if you now come and add anxiety of money to it, then that's when your night sweat becomes more, palpitation becomes more, you know, all the hot flushes become more for you. Then also another problem that one can have, another effect that financial stress can have on one's health is relationship difficulties. You know, money is often cited as one of the most common issues couples argue about. In fact, each time I'm counseling couples, I'll tell them there are three things you need to be very, very careful in your marriage and it's communication sex and money money is usually one of the major issues even up at these days you know if you leave you know and uh, financial is situations unchecked stress can make you angry it can make you irritable it can even make you to lose interest in you know having fun with your spouse so we need to be actually very very careful concerning money there has to be real communication agreement decisions concerning money in many marriages and you know and one needs to be very very careful about that then another issue can be social withdrawal financial worries can cause you to withdraw from your friends curtail your social life and retreat into your shell which will only make even the stress more for you then for some other people it is physical ailments such as headache they begin to have headache, they begin to have gastrointestinal problems like ulcers, diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart diseases. You know, these are all the things that can come up when one is having financial, you know, problems. And then unhealthy coping methods. Some people will now begin to go to drink. And that's why couples need to be very, very careful. Watch, it's not only the men, even the women. I know, like us in Nigeria, it's mainly men that resort to drinking. But some women also resort to drinking to use it as a way of escaping from financial issues. So when you notice that your spouse is beginning to drink, you know, they might not begin to justify hot drinks or wine and things like that look into it very well try to get the person to talk with you it could be financial issue that is making that person so there is a circle you know there is a kind of circle that comes we call it the vicious circle of poor financial health and poor mental health you know when one is having financial problem and it uh, impacts very much on the mental health of the person the stress of death or other financial issue will not leave the person feeling depressed and anxious and the decline in that mental health now makes it harder for the person to manage money, you know. And then the person will find it harder to concentrate in his job or in his business and have lack of energy to tackle, you know, mounting um, bills that are coming. Or the person may even lose some income, especially for business people. There are some people that when they are having some kind of issues, depression, financial depression, they will be able to take good decisions. So with that, they will lose money. And losing money again will now make it difficult for them to, to concentrate. So the circles just keeps going around and they will keep getting deep, deep into debt without handling it. So that's why I keep saying it's very, very important for one to handle one's financial issue early enough. You know, so we're going to be looking at the seven tips for dealing with financial stress. Seven tips for dealing with financial stress. So number one, you need, don't ignore your problems. Don't ignore your money problem. When you have money problem, please don't ignore it. You actually feel worse if you turn away from your problem. Because when you don't handle a problem and look at it straight in the eye, it's going to make you, you know, it's going to make you keep procrastinating and the issue will be expanding. So you need to look at that money problem. What is causing it? Face it. In fact, they will say, take the bull by the horn and face it. Or oh, yeah, let's talk about this thing. Let's even go through it. You know? So you need to look at all those bills. Open up the bills. Start calming your mind. And always telling yourself that nothing is difficult for God. There is nothing impossible for God. There is nothing difficult for God. And again, we have a capsule <laughs> that we always give people. <laughs> We have a capsule. We call it the Philippine capsule. We call it the Philippine capsule. You know, 
that one can take if one is having some kind of financial issues and i will quickly tell you where you can find that capsule is found in philippians chapter 4 verses 4 to 8 philippians chapter 4 that's where they sell it so if you're a christian and you have your bible anytime you're having issues with your financial health go to philippians chapter 4 verses 4 to 8 go to philippians chapter 4 verses 4 to 8 you know and it says rejoice in the lord always again i say rejoice let your gentleness be made known unto all men the lord is at hand be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication we first given let your request be known made known unto god and the peace of god which passes passes all understanding will guide your heart and mind through christ jesus you know so what do i normally advise people i'm talking about facing number one tip for handling your problem is to face your problem bring it out like i have my notebook now write down all all the things that financial problem that financial crisis that financial you know problem is causing you what you need it for write all of them down and then you take it to god in prayer the bible says there that you should rejoice in the lord first of all thank god for them thank god for because he's the one that made you and then you carry it like a burden that the lord says lay your burden hand over your own my, your yoke your heavy yoke for me and take up my own you just hand over that heavy yoke unto the lord face it up talk about it you need to talk talk over it with yourself talk over it with the lord and let the lord know about it and if you're not yet born again it's even an opportunity for you now as you're hearing me to go down on your knees and ask god to have mercy on you forgive your sin and accept you as his lord as personal savior and that's when this word can work for you that's when this philippians 4 4 to 8 i'll talk about i've talked about now can work for you that's when that philippine capsule can actually work for you very well so that's tip number one tip number two talk to somebody you need to talk to somebody you know when you're facing money problem there's often a strong temptation to bottle everything up and try to go through it alone but many of us you know even many of us we consider money as something you shouldn't discuss with people but that is very wrong you need to talk about money you may feel you know awkward about disclosing your your, your the amount of money you're earning or, or your money issues or money problems with people it's very very good for you to talk about it especially when you have close relations that are there you know bottling up things will only make your financial issues and your stress worse especially in this current economy there are a lot of people who are struggling hmm. you need to know so don't think you're alone when you bring it out and you discuss it with people it can help you have someone even if it's not a, a confident have a prayer partner if you're a lady find another lady you will discuss things with not the person who will carry your affairs or i'm going to be sharing give it <laughs> testimonies of what happens but have someone you discuss with that you'll be able to share your issues with you know and you know it's always good to have people you talk with concerning your problem not some people will go to go and look at books to see if books will solve their problem no 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 if you're a child of god meet your pastor if you're a man if you're a lady meet your pastor's wife or look at senior people in your church Especially, don't even look at all these people who are big and think, oh, they will not be able to solve my problem. Go to them. Tell them. Talk to them. You know, keeping money worries to yourself only amplifies them until they become unsurmountable for you. You know, so the simple act of expressing your problems to someone you trust can make them seem far less, you know, because it, it will intimidate you less when you speak it out. It's not even only just money problem. When you have issues and you discuss with people, it will really, there's a way, a kind of, you will feel light when you discuss that problem with people. So the person you talk to doesn't have to be able to fix your problem. It doesn't mean that, you know, when, like me, that's for me. When people come and tell me about their financial need, I'm not really looking at it that they want me to dash them money. No. But there are other, if it's somebody who is experienced, he can tell you some of these tips that you need to know and that's why i'm saying that even this teaching for us is not just a matter of 
that you are having financial problem but you can gain for me so that you'll be able to help others when they are having financial issues and again you can also talk to professionals you can get professional advices through a counselor like i said through your pastor or through senior colleagues in your office who have passed through the issues you're ha having and then you must talk with your family members it's very very important why i'm talking so much about this is i had a case of a man that had a financial problem he he was involved he was cunningly and when that problem was escalated he did not tell anybody he was bottling it within himself he didn't tell anybody until the case became a big police case and not only that it became a big police case it now became a problem that the owners of the money said ah it's either they give them their money or they are going to jail and he was still bottling it looking for how to handle it until he now even became because there's no way he could have been able to bring out that kind of money until it now became a case of the money must be paid and jail sentence must be passed. You know, if he opened up early enough to his family members, like I always tell people, if you have an accident today and they say if they don't take you to hospital, you will die. There is no Nigeria because of our Nigerian way of life. There is no Nigeria that way you look round and they really work hard on relations. They will not gather up to tell relations that we help that person out of that problem. You know, so that guy, by the time he opened up, the case was so complicated and messed up. So his relations spent millions, maybe like double the amount of money. Of which if he opened up early enough to his relation, at that early stage, maybe they would have rallied around to go to the person they do to say, okay, Oga, let's settle this thing out of court. Let's settle this thing and then they will settle it. So it's always good for us to talk. Make time to talk with your family members they will always have there will always be somebody who will empathize with you and help you so talk to someone and then number three the three tip for overcoming financial anxiety is to take inventory of your finances so i'm saying number three take inventory of your finances include every source of your income in addition to your salary include your bonuses include your child support include your interest include every source of income maybe like the side money you get even gifts from friends everything that you get just include it in the inventory you're making then you after bringing out all your income then you check your expenses for example i know one way that i used to save money when i was a student was cutting down on my snacks and even for those of us who are working like, for example especially for those who live in areas like lagos where they have a lot of traffic you know if you're commuting with bus to work and all those people who are selling or even if you're in your car alone all those people who are selling all those traffic sellers eh, your eye will just be going to this one um this one that one you will just be going all those things they are carrying and before you know it you will bring out money you didn't plan for and buy you will buy this and you find that by the time you keep buying like that, it becomes a habit for you. Check it. Let's even take gala and mineral. 100 naira. I think, I don't know how much they sell those minerals now. But let's even take his 100 naira. 200 naira because you're in the traffic. You have eaten in the morning. No? But because you're in one place and you're feeling bored. 200 naira Monday. 200 naira Tuesday. Times 5 to Friday. Is it not 1,000? 1,000 times 4. Is it not 4,000 naira? That's expenses that you could have cut out, you know. As, and this goes all the way, even for lunch time. And that's why I can remember the guys that were living with me in those days that married from my house. I used to tell them, make sure your wife makes your breakfast before you go to work. So one of them, when he started, he was, he's a very big man now. In those days, he, he was working in the back. He will not carry his lunch back. To enter the bank and his colleague will say ah oga now because you just marry every time you will just they carry lunch box they come to work they will go to canteen number one they are eating food they are not sure of how it was cooked number two that food the people who are selling it are making their profit number three you know his um health is there but the one you your wife cooked at home but if your wife cooks and he cooks for every member of the family and he cooks and serves everybody food and everybody goes with their food you will save a lot of money so you need to list all your expenses and then you are going to also list all your income 
and then you need to keep a, tr a track of it and for us in nigeria I always tell people because we are not a a loan country i put it in quotes unlike abroad you know abroad they love giving people loans they even give you loan that that government so thank god for them they give you loan with zero interest and then they tell you pay anytime you like and they not only pay anytime you like when there's any issue they are going to forgive you nigeria is not like that so i don't even want to look at the area of loan anything you cannot afford the best thing for you is to keep away i'm talking about normal day-to-day -day expenses not just like business so for those of us who are in business i take loan i pay my loan I take loan no. In fact, my husband will say, ah, it's my wife that takes loan, go to her. Because I know what loan can do for me. I look at it very well. I do all the, you know, feasibility studies. I take my loan and I thank God I'm debt free. Anytime I take it a loan, it's because it's going to give me more money. I might even have that money, but I'll still go ahead and take that loan so that it can help me to, you know, be strict with the way I spend that money. So you need to identify your spending patterns. Sometimes it is boredom or stress that make us to spend money. Like those of us who are in traffic and you're bored of staying in, in the traffic, then you will just buy something to keep while away time. And some of us, it's for our children that make us to, you know, trigger all those expenses that are not planned for. Maybe you want your child to sit in one place in the car, then you now buy biscuit and give that child. Or you are in the church because you want the child to stay in one place. You take biscuit and give that child so that the child can stay in one place. You forget that the money you're using to buy that biscuit is not in your expenses that you planned for. So you need to look at small, small changes. You need to make small, small changes. Spending money on things like um, those, of, those men that every money they will go and buy a newspaper. Lunch time, you go and buy lunch and add cocoa or mineral to it. You know, those who eat outside, they go to canteen. Instead of them to buy a bottle of water, bottle of water could be 100 naira. Bottle of coke or can malt could be 150. That extra 50 naira is, can save you a lot. So it may be reasonable to actually deny yourself of some pleasure, but cutting down on those non-essential expenses, you know, are little, little ways you can reduce your daily expenses and actually make sure that you live better. Because I'm looking at some of these ways that can help you to have a better financial life. Then eliminate, eliminate impulse spending. Especially for those women like us that go shopping. Hmm. I always tell people, have a list of what you want to buy in the market. And stick to it. This thing showed me pepper. What I'm telling you now, this secret, I had learned it the hard way. When I enter a supermarket, I don't have a list. I buy according to what I see. In those days, I will buy, buy, buy. When I come back, I find that I have spent more than what I need. You know, so now if I'm going to the market, I write down what I need. I don't shop according to the shelf. I shop according to my list. That will help you. If I want to spoil myself, I spoil myself. But the things in the shop are not supposed to have dominion over me. They're not supposed to have a hold on me that I must buy it. No. If I want to buy anything, it's not, I can afford a lot of things, but I'm just teaching you how you can eliminate impulse expenses and eliminate these financial anxieties that it can help you to go a long way to live better. So impulse buying can actually wreck your budget and it can actually make you to go a borrowing. Because by the time you have spent money on all those things that are not necessary, the necessary things, you just have to get them. And by then you would have spent all your money. All right, so number four is to make a plan and stick to your plan. Identify your money problems. Know what your money problems are. Know what your money problems are. Identify them and then devise a solution. Devise a solution for solving that money problem. Brainstorm ideas with your family or trusted friend on how you can work, work around on it. I, give, I use myself as an example. You know, when I started my school, I needed to build the school. We were running into a lot of, you know, financial crisis and the school was not going like it needed to go for me. So I was already having pressure financially. Every end of month that I need to pay salaries, my heart will be pounding like this. All these things are what I had experienced. My heart will be pounding like this. I'll be asking myself, how am I going to do this thing again? No. 
how am I going to do this thing? What's going to happen to this month's salary? And as God we have it, my my banker was my sister. So she was the one that when I needed loan to do a few things, she's the one that will help me to quicken up the loan. Then they will give me the loan. Then I'll start paying back. After a time, I found out that the interest was wrecking my neck. You know, it was so bad. It was bringing financial pressure on me. And I'm not able to cope with payment of salary. But I was open to this, my sister. That's what I'm trying. Devise a solution. Brainstorm ideas with a family or a trusted member of your family or a trusted friend. You can even consult free financial counseling people that can help you. So that's how I consulted my sister. And then she was like, okay, you need to start paying your loan. But that same my sister is my upline in my business today. She now said, I've told you. I said, okay, show me. She started showing me the business. I said, I just entered this business. I didn't, that time I invited you in, in February to come to my house. That's what I invited you for. I said, hey, you didn't tell me what it was, so I didn't go. She said, hey, that's why I've done this business for, she showed me 30 days. She brought out her phone. She said, sister, see my alert. So I really sat down and I listened to her very well. And she was showing me, she said, you know, you, you will use the product, the product will work for you. And then you will call this person and this person will work for you, you know. So I listened. I you know what happened to me that day reminds me of what they say one should do. If somebody shows you an opportunity and you don't know how to go about it, say yes and learn how to do it. That was exactly what I did. Number four, make a plan and stick to it. Put your plan into action. I put my plan into action. I made up my mind. I said, I must be debt free. I can't. And you know, what even encouraged me by the next month, by the time I was becoming one month, she was two months in the business. Her last that month was 500,000. I now stuck to it. I said, 500,000 is my own. I'm sticking to this thing. That was exactly what happened. Because I put my plan in place. And I stuck to that plan. I monitored my progress. That's another thing you need to do. You monitor your progress. I did not allow people around me to disturb me. So you need to monitor your progress. Then don't get derailed by setbacks. You know, we are all human. And no matter how tight your plan is, you may stray from your goal or something unexpected could happen to derail you. Don't beat yourself up. Put you know, but you need to get back on track as soon as possible. The more detailed you can make your plan, the less powerless you feel over financial situation and crisis. Then number five, create a budget. Create your yearly budget. Create your monthly budget. How do you do this? Make your budget in a month, in a year. This is what I want to accomplish. After you have listed your income and your recurrent fee that's what i call it the income that you need to that you need to that is compulsory for you to spend every day then you make your budget and always bring out a savings manage your overall stress that's number six get moving practice a relaxation technique and then don't skip your sleep if you're lacking sleep make sure you do everything in your power to make sure you sleep well like i always tell people if you need some of the things that can make you sleep well, make you live happier, you can always DM me and I'm going to be showing you some of the things I use that make me sleep better. Because you need to practice a relaxation technique. You need to practice what can help you to sleep well. You also need to boost your self-esteem. That's managing your stress, you know. Boost your self-esteem. Always tell yourself, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. So when there is a challenge before you, don't suck back and feel, oh no, I cannot do this thing. Be bold enough to know that you can do it. And then another thing that can help you manage your stress is to eat healthy food. You need to eat healthy food. Go down my page, you'll see a lot of things I've thought about healthy living and healthy food that can help you. Also, number managing your stress, you need to be grateful for the good things in your life. You know, when you're worried so much about money and you're, you have a lot of financial uncertainty, it's easy for you to focus your attention on the negative things. I remember one man that called last week and he was really crying. He's a man, he was crying on the phone. 
and telling my husband, I say, I don't know what has happened to me all these months. Why have I been focusing on negative, negative things? Why have I been focusing on what God did not do for me? Did God did not do this one? This person did not, did not do, he was really, you know, he says that God just woke him up in the night and asked him to be grateful for once. And you know, that changed that man's life. We need to be grateful every day. There is always something to thank God for. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. And you will see what God has done for you. So you need to be grateful. And then the final thing, it's all about attitude. Be thankful and grateful for everything you have. That's where to start from. So be thankful. You know, it's all about attitude. I was trying to tell us this story that really, really baffles me. They said, a man, they asked him to come for a, a meeting. And he was complaining. And the man said, I don't have shoe to wear. To come for the meeting they said come Oga, come he said i don't have shoe to wear so as he was complaining about shoe and being you know grumbling and going to the the meeting he now saw somebody who did not have leg now he is complaining that he didn't have shoe but there's somebody who did not have leg as the one that did not have leg was complaining that he did not have leg he now saw one that did not even that's that one had only one leg and i saw one that they say that um, there's i don't know how to explain it in english show but they say he cannot get up that's his own problem he cannot get up the one that had only one leg who use one leg with stick but to be going but the other one cannot even get up you know so no matter what your problem is you need to be thankful or to god no matter what that financial crisis is, you need to be thankful Lord, to God and have a plan B. And that's why I want to introduce to you today, having an extra stream of income that you can do while doing whatever you're doing. Thanks everyone. I appreciate you. Kindly share this with friends so that they can also get these tips of overcoming financial anxiety. Remember I said tip number one, don't ignore your, your, your money problem. Make sure you handle it. Face it with Philippine capsule, which is Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 8. And then number 2, talk to someone about it. Talk to me. My number is 0703-515-1642. Then number 3, take inventory of your finances. You need to know your income and your expenses and know how to handle your income and your expenses. Number 4, make a plan and stick to it. Decide to have a second stream of income today. So that you'll be able to use it to solve your financial problem and stick to the plan and make sure you get to the top of it. Then create a monthly budget. Create a weekly budget. Create a yearly budget concerning the income that you're making and manage your overall stress. All the other things that bring stress to you, manage them very well. And then it's all about attitude. Make sure you have the good and right attitude. Thanks for joining me once again. I love you all. Bye. And remain blessed and have the right attitude. Be motivated. Bye.